Warning. You are about to enter the BGP suite. No thongs. No boy shorts. No thigh highs. No commandos are permissible. BGP. Big girl panties only. So pull up to woman up. And no, please don't leave with your panties in a bunch. Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Adrian, and welcome to BGP. Um, first, before we go any further, I want to remind you to subscribe and make sure that you um, share and comment. We we uh, really like to look back at the comments and see where we can help. If there's some other topics that you would like to see addressed here on the show, we encourage that as well. Um, I'm going to go right into today's topic, um, my Q&A of the day. And what I do is I will pose a question and I will ask my sisters over here to chime in. I also ask that you will go on to the comment section and um, give your answer or what you feel about the today's topic or today's question that I'm going to pose today. So today's topic is ride or die chick. Mm -hmm. Are you that ride or die chick? So I always like to give a little bit of a scenario to kind of put you in right in the situation. So your spouse has been involved in some illegal activity. He's your spouse. He's been involved in some legal activity. This activity has afforded you a very nice lifestyle. You have nice cars, nice clothes, beautiful homes, but something happens. He gets busted and he gets sentenced to 20 years federal time. And um, you do have children. So my question to you, are you gonna stick by your man? Are you that ride or die chick? Are you gonna, if he's been sentenced to 20 years in the penitentiary, are you able to stick by him? Misha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. I know the last question you posed, I said I was a Taurus and that I was loyal. I'm stubborn, but loyal, mm, right? Nevertheless, yes. But in this situation, <laughs> first off, I don't deal with men that do stuff that risk their livelihood and that can affect our family. Mm. So... If that's the type of man he is, and I find out, I'm cutting my losses early. Two, my answer would be no. I mean, I, I I wouldn't. I don't. I don't date men that are that are that are in the streets. Like, if that's what it is, let's just say he's in the streets. He's doing. He's making illegal money, doing illegal things that can affect his livelihood. My answer is no. Like, I'm I'm not trying to be in that situation. I'm not trying to put. If I had children like that at risk, I'm not trying to do something that's going to affect our household. Right. Um, and he should he he should know that he would know any man that deals with me would know that. Um, three, hypothetically, let's say I'm one of those chicks that do. Um, if I was to entertain someone like that, and was okay with that and receiving gifts and knowing that there's a chance, right? And even though we have family, if I was, then I guess I would have no choice but to, especially if he's my husband, I would have no choice but to, <laughs> I guess, wait until he gets out, make sure the children still has a relationship with him and, you know, hope he doesn't become somebody else's um, bottom. Um mm. But other than that, for the most part, I don't date men like that. So, you know, my answer is no. No. Okay, what about you, Miss Mo? Do we have any money left? Hmm. Well, if he has managed, uh, well, let's see. Yeah, he does have a little change. Let's say he's got about 10 G's in the bank. That's it. Just That's 10. not enough. Okay, so... Let's say I am, I'm not a ride or die, I'm a ride and ride, though. I am a ride and ride. <clears throat> Being in the penitentiary is uh, a whole new world. Um, when you get locked up, you don't even uh, have a name anymore, you have a number. Mm -hmm. 
um, the free world, the free world versus you know uh, being incarcerated, is a, a whole different scenario. And I do know men that have been locked up five, ten, damn near twenty years, and they will tell you that they possibly they can't do that time by themselves. Now, say, for instance, that was my husband, and I'm glad that you said husband mm -hmm. instead of man, because if right. it was my man, hell no. Mm -hmm. But I also believe in you play, you pay. As enthusiastic as you were when you were out in the streets doing uh, illegal actions, you should be enthusiastic when you get <laughs> locked up. <laughs> right? I mean, that, that's yeah. just how the game goes. Exactly. So, When a loved one is locked up, and I mean a real loved one, what seems to happen is that the people that love him, they somewhat get locked up too. Mm -hmm. A piece of you is locked up when somebody that you love is incarcerated. You know, you worry about them. You worry about their safety. You know, the food is nasty in there. You got to send them boxes. Um, you worry about somebody stabbing them or they're getting in a fight that makes them have a longer sentence. So that's a hard bid. My husband, I would, uh, how long is he locked up? It, Even if he got 20 years and he had to serve half, that's 10. Okay. I mean, but if it's fed, though, they got to serve 80% of their time. Yeah. Okay. My husband, I would probably stay married to my husband, but I'm not going to volunteer to be locked up with my husband. Um, because here's the thing, when they're locked up, they get free room and board, they get food, they, you know, they don't have any bills. I'm going to be on the outside trying to keep the roof over um, my head, our children's heads, you know, uh, getting them back and forth to school, clothes, and, you know, all the materialistic things we need. And... He gonna have to be on his own. Mm. I would try to support him as much as as um, I could, but I don't think that a true man would allow his woman to do that time with him. What I'm trying to say here is I would not volunteer to be incarcerated with him. What if, um, because of the crime that he committed, he was, you know, some if it's a violent crime if this is still how it goes, is you don't get conjugal visits. But in his situation, he's able to get conjugal visits. You're able to take the children down there, maybe monthly. Um, <clears throat> would that change anything for you? First of all, I would not go to get conjugal visits. I don't know what's going on in there. I don't know what he needs to do to keep his sanity. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Um, no, I'm not doing no conjugal visits. Mm -hmm. So like I'm saying, I'm not volunteering to stay locked up with him. He's going to do his thing on the, on the inside. I'm going to do my best to support him, send him letters. If I have some extra money, send him some boxes. If he's not too far away, you know, if it's not a hardship, uh, bring the, I don't even think I would want to bring mm -hmm. my children down see, to see him, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, that would have to be something that we would have to talk about because I, no, I don't think that mm -hmm. I would be able to do it. Now, how do you think he would feel if you benefited from all of his hustling during the time while he was free? And then now all of a sudden we walk away from them. Well, I didn't say I would turn my back on him and whatever he has, <clears throat> whatever resources he had, I wouldn't touch him. Mm -hmm. That would be, be his whenever he got out. If he wanted me to put those in that money on his books, I would do that. I wouldn't touch his resources, but like I said, I think it would be a selfish individual to expect so much from somebody when he's not doing anything. A man is supposed to be a provider and protector, and now he's locked up for 20 years. He can't provide or protect me. So he broke the contract. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, like I said, hey, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Nisha. If the, maybe if the sentence wasn't as long, do you have a... A, like maybe you could do a two or three year stretch or a four year stretch and be by his side or it just the 20 years is just the, the you know it's that kind of made it where it was no it's not even the time uh the sentencing that would be an issue for me it's the putting me in a position where now I have to be the primary provider quote-unquote protector of the household for the possible children that we have together mm -hmm. again 
I don't want to be in a situation where I'm dating someone who could possibly put us at risk as well as him um, for being locked up, mm -hmm. period. Because a lot of times, too, not only does it affect him, but it affects the family. Because think about it. If they raid the house, if they disrupt the house, if we're being followed, if our phones are being tapped, quote unquote, if they're watching every move we make, if we happen to get arrested, because sometimes the spouse gets arrested, too, yes. just to get more information on that particular person they're looking for. Why would I want to be with someone who's going to put my livelihood at risk? Mm -hmm. So, no. I mean, like I said, any man that knows me know I don't date men like that. Mm -hmm. That's for one. Mm -hmm. But if I was the quote-unquote chick that do, you know, it's it, I'm not a ride-or-die chick. Yeah. And you brought Plain up something that made me think about something. When uh, a situation like that, sometimes this opens up a whole nother can of worms. You get a DCFS case yep. opened up. Yep. You may end up, your children could be taken away yep. from you. So it gets even bigger. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think as women, we really need to, and yes, everything looks lovely on the outside. You got the nice cars. He's putting the house, up in Range Rovers and Benz. The Benz's money, and the yeah, cash. All of that looks lovely. Right. But at the end of the day, what's at what cost? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it, it can get very crazy. I know a lot of people, uh, well, I won't say a lot, a few of my friends that have dealt with that and then have stuck by they do 10, 15 years, and they get out and the relationship doesn't even I, I know women that do it. Yeah. I know women that are quote unquote ride or die. They stick with them. They don't entertain any other man. They wait. And, you know, while he serves 10, 12, 15, 20 years, Ooh, I've seen it. Yes. And they'd be like, that's my husband. And they go down there and they visit. And they, they I I know some loyal women that do it. I'm just not that ride or die chick. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't, I can't see myself doing it. And then, too, me being how I am with kids, I wouldn't even want them to see that. Like, mm -hmm. It, 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 cause it, 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 not, like I said, it don't only affect me, it affect the kids too. Cause now they got to deal with, uh, daddy got arrested. Daddy got to be away for so much time. By the time daddy gets out, they grown, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They got to witness mama doing it all by herself basically for these years because daddy's gone. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. mm -mm, I, I personally can't handle it. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to sit here and be hypocritical. I um, have dated um, hustlers <laughs> in my 20s. Mm -hmm. um, here's the thing. And this is why the show Love and Lock Up, Lo Love and Lock Up is so popular. Yes. And when you look at Love and Lock, Love, ooh, what the hell? Love, <laughs> love and Lock Up. <laughs> it's um, a tongue twister. It, that's, that's not reality TV. That's actually it's real. what happens. Here's the thing about waiting for a man that has been incarcerated. Um, I've read about it, and I also know that once they've been locked up 5, 10, 15, 20 years, they have a pattern that they come home with. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they get up at a certain time because that's what they were programmed to do. So they have that programming when they come home. Mm -hmm. And they don't really work with emotions when they get out. They're so used to not having a woman if you don't show up. It wouldn't affect them like if it affects a man that has been out on the streets. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have that connection. And even if you uh, are talking to them, because, you know, inside of prison, they do have pen pal lists. Mm. Yeah. Like, like the I work bulletin board. Yeah. They mm -hmm. might call them tricks, but they do have people that you can correspond with and that will help you do your time and they will send you the most beautiful letters and say mm -hmm. hey queen I hope, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this letter finds you in health and prosperity oh, right. may God. Allah Ooh, okay. may I'm Allah really bless you, you. <laughs> <laughs> and in those letters that you know they tell you the most beautiful things they get one of their little homies is, Draw uh, some <laughs> yeah. Yep. And oh they make all these promises when they get out, they're going to do better and they want a house and they want a business and they want to raise a family. And they may have good intentions to do so, but when they get out, they got to get wild because they have been so confined mm. and they have missed out on a lot of things. And 
you know, the world has changed mm -hmm. and they, they get out in the free world and it's like a kid in the candy shop. So if you are involved with a man that's incarcerated that has been locked up five, 10, 20 years, and you think that you're exuding unconditional love, your unconditional love is going to be tested mm -hmm, because yeah. they want the latest clothes. They want to go everywhere, and it's their right to be free. They need to be free. So he might not come home for five days, you know. Wow. He might want to hit you, but he want to go hang out with his homies, and he want to do some things and, and spend some money and just be out. Mm -hmm. And there, it's not enough for them to be free and just smell the fresh air and look up in the sky. They, they're they trying to catch up for exactly. lost time. Right, right. So that that will test your unconditional love. And when you see love and lock up and they're like, you said that you were going to mm. do this and you weren't going to drink anymore. There was one show where this lady got out. He, she was a crackhead. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> she, she was a crackhead and his mother helped him and he gave her his credit card and she was supposed to go out and find this dress, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And he and they were supposed to come back and get married. So they were getting married in this bar. And he's in the bar with a suit with the pastor. And they waiting, waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting. And she came back like nine or ten hours later, oh. right? And so they got married and they got a room. And she told him she needed some crack, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh she said, I need some crack. So he was like, this is my mom money. He went and got her some crack, right? Wow. <laughs> so he well, I guess he loyal. Crack. Damn. He went and got her some crack. So then she wanted some more crack, right? So he went and got her. So she said, let me go to get the crack. So she went to go to get the crack. He gave her his credit card, his car, and she didn't come back. Oh. And now he's in the room crying. <laughs> and he had to call his mother. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. And so he's no. like, she ran off, and the mama was like, "Well, I thought you just got married, right?" And so he was like, "We did, but she has a problem, right?" So no. the mother was like, "Cause he didn't have to tell the mama that his yeah. woman was a crackhead, right?" And so the mother's like, "What's the problem?" And she's, he's like, "She's on drugs." And the wow. mama was like, "Oh my god, right?" So how he got her, she ended up going back to jail. Mm -hmm. And then he waited for her again, and she got out again. <laughs> no, no, mm -hmm. no, I can't. It's do just, it. it's okay. just too much drama. Uh, it's I can't too much do drama. it. It's too much drama. And and I've, I find that, and I have a few people that that's their pattern. They they are okay with dealing with guys and, that are locked and, up in in, the, in prison. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that comes from. What do you think would cause a woman to constantly pick a guy that's in prison? Is it something with her self-esteem? Is it something with her, um, she feels safe because she know where he is, that's for sure. But I've seen them where they manage to even cheat in prison. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, they have multiple pen pals, multiple yeah. people sending them stuff. Yeah. You, they you go out there to visit them yes. and you got to sign somebody in. else. And you like, like, what? Oh, hell no. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah. I think it's almost a safe thing for some women. Like, they feel like at least I know where he is. Is it safe, though? I, I mean, because not only cheating with other women, but, I mean, there are some that like Mr. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's in there, too. Yes. They like Mr. too, on yeah. top of it. They learn so, that they have those tendencies. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've heard stories. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, that, like, Mona brought up an interesting point because I've heard men say that have, who have done their time and got out, they was like, they said it took them years to get adjusted to being free mm -hmm. because they process, it, it was yeah. like they said it, it was like they was like caged animals and they was like prepared to fight like prepared to just be a soldier when they was locked up and so when they get out they have to retrain their mind to be like mm -hmm. not everybody is out to right. you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. so and then you have like the family that's been waiting on you that's like come home and they just like nah mm -hmm. you know because they used to just being restrained and right. now it's they're not so I, again, I'm going to go back. I'm not ride or die. Yeah. I'm yeah. that girl that's going to be like, I wish you well. Yeah. Good luck. If you write me, I may write you back. <laughs> if you call me, I might take your call. Maybe. But 
I'm not going to, I'm going to wait for you for mm -hmm. all 20 years until you, no. <laughs> right. No, absolutely not. No. Mm -hmm. They do need some correspondence. They do need, you know, somebody to, 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 to know that um, they're cared for. Like I say, if it's a, if it's a loved one, I'm going to support them. Mm -hmm. You know, they do need that support. They do need that outside um, yeah. help. Encouragement. Um, as mm -hmm. much as I can. I'm not going to break myself mm -hmm. to do anything. Uh, because I have outside responsibilities. The type of women that probably get with these men, they do have low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to uh, send me a collect call that I got to pay for and then bark orders to me. <laughs> and, they do, and they, they do it. They do it. They oh trying to God. run a household yeah. from prison. Yeah. They Put trying him on to the discipline phone. the kids. Let me talk yeah. to him. Let me talk yeah, to yeah, her. Yeah, boo boo said he's going to ask him at the club. Yeah, exactly. No, uh, 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 dude, you get do your what ass off my phone. <laughs> what free people do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Doing too much. Yeah. Doing too much. Okay. Well, that was great. Thanks for your, your input. You're welcome. That was great. And in closing, anything you would like to tell the audience of any you know that may be dealing with this very issue? Ladies, it's okay not to be a ride or die chick. <laughs> if you're not about that life, <laughs> if you know you can't be loyal and stand ten toes down with that person and, and wait them all those years mm. in hopes that he comes home, you know, as the man that you, you saw him leave as, which he won't uh Cut your losses early and don't get in that lifestyle. You know, that's all I can say. Good. I would say that a lot of us that that live in the hood and live in the uh, environment are going to run across men that have to do anything that they need to do to take care of their bills, to feel like they're a man. Um, just understand that they're taking penitentiary chances, and you may be taking penitentiary chances too. You know, um, they have those RICO laws now. They have those yep. accomplice laws now. So, you know, try to find you a good man, a trash man, a man that, you know, works at Arrowhead or mm -hmm. <laughs> a janitor, or, you right. know, somebody that drives a truck at UPS. Um, yeah, you do, the, you do the crime, you do the time. So try to get you a little nerd, a computer man. Um, and if we stay away from them, then they have to do better. Yeah, That's all I have to say about it. Thank you. You're and in welcome. closing, that's that's it for today, ladies. All right. Thank and you. so until the next <laughs> episode, ladies, keep those panties clean. And we out. Bye. Bye.